white chocolate peppermint. The shop owner carefully put your order together. You were already looking forward to when you'd eat your fine selection of fudge. You couldn't help but try to imagine how Cove might react when you presented this to him. Everyone else is definitely going to be happy when you group later. See, I can do a lot of good when I'm off doing errands on my own. You paid and there was no stopping with, uh, with the, no stopping the large grin going, across, going all across your face. Pipping on your heels, you wove your way back to the center of the path. Okay. You pondered for a moment what you should do now. None of the stalls were catching your eye. What did grab your attention, however, was a head of familiar seafoam's hair sticking out above the crowd. You knew instantly it was Cove. He hadn't noticed you yet, but he was walking in your direction. He held a couple bags tightly in his hand. Strangely, he couldn't spot your mom or his dad anywhere. You let it, you'd let him go. You called out to him. I mean, he wasn't... He's not by him... No, he is by himself. He's by himself, and I'm by myself, so I might as well just call out to him. You called out to him. Cove, over here. He instantly stopped dead in his tracks. Alert, Cove's head snapped up and his eyes searched the crowd until they landed on you. His whole demeanor brightened at the sight. Vaughn. Vaughn. He weaved through his passers-by deftly in the attempt to get through this as fast as, re as reasonably possible, slipping around them with ease. It only took a moment for him to arrive. It was undeniable that he was shopping by himself. You stared at him confused. Where's the rest of your group? Cove crossed his arms defiantly, the bags twisting in front of him. Your mom took my dad and I ended up alone. Why are you by yourself? Ma and Liz abandoned me too. What? What? I can't believe this happened to both of us. Hmm. They planned it. They had to. But I don't know why. Are they pranking us? I don't know either. And you meant it. You couldn't fathom what your moms were up to. Kof shook his head, trying to clear his mind. So... Is this like a test to see if we could like be by ourselves? Is this a test? Because I mean, I'd, I'd be fine with it. I would. The only reason why I called out to Ko was because he looked so lonely. If Cove was still with his group, I wouldn't have necessarily called out to him. I would have just let them go, you know, since he was with his other group. But since he was by himself and clearly miserable, I was at least going to say, Hey, just so you know, I'm here too. Just so you know. Well, his his change in tone caught your attention. You watch his eyes start to twinkle in mischief as his mouth pulled into a cheeky smile. You know, it is technically later, and your mom isn't around this time. You chuckled, knowing exactly what he was implying. That incident was already replaying in your head. You hugged him, you kissed him, bashfully nodded. Flustered you told him not right now. I don't really feel like it right now. No, I'm, you kissed him. You stepped closer, placing a hand in his upper arm. Kof beamed and leaned in. It was quick, too quick, but you could feel him smile through it. When you both did part, Kof chuckled affectionately. I'm glad it's later. Me too. Me too. So, uh... His gaze wandered off as if one of your parents might simply appear if he kept checking, and you could tell he was still processing the situation. He stretched the back of his head, looking sheepish. You want to forget about whatever's happening and go shopping together? Definitely. You shrugged. Happily, you nodded. I'm not sure. Um... I I'll just shrug. Whether you were shopping together or alone, it didn't really matter much to you. Cove's lips uh, pressed into a thin line. Is that a yes? Yeah, all right. Cove's grin twisted with a conspiratorial one. You both knew that you were going against whatever had really been planned for this outing, but luckily neither of you cared one bit at this point. So, where to first? I don't mind going back the way I came if it's new to you. It's not hard to miss stuff even if I gone past it. What have you gotten? Cove shuffled his bags around and started pulling them open so you could peek inside each one. You recognize the array of things he picked up around the market. Mm. I mostly got typical things I can use pretty easily so far. Nothing super exciting. And, well, I picked up a few things I figured you might want to have, too. There were a few red onions, some lemons, and potatoes, among other things that were wrapped up so you couldn't discern what they were. You chose perfectly. Thank you. What Cove bought made sense, but it was far from a complete selection. You glance around at the nearby stalls. Want to start over there? Cole followed your eyes who pointed at one of the larger stalls. It was filled with several kinds of staple fruits and vegetables. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Once a few people finished paying and moved, you and Cove got yourselves directly in front of the shop. There were so many things to pick from. Apples, oranges, peaches, strawberries, onions, peppers, lettuce, cucumbers, carrots, lemons, lime, spinach, potatoes. I mean, I'm definitely going for peaches because I love me good peaches. I love me some strawberries. Apples and oranges are fine, but, you know, 
I think I wouldn't necessarily pick them up unless I had something specific for them. Peppers, yes. Lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers. I'm not a big cucumber fan. See, with me, I do love vegetables. I like vegetables, but I, I dislike raw, crunchy vegetables. I don't like my carrots raw and crunchy. I like them stewed and soft, you know. I don't like, um, I don't like zucchini because they're too crunchy and too juicy. I, that's the other thing that might be weird with me. I like, I don't like my vegetables too juicy. Although are cucumbers considered a fruit because they're seed, they have seeds in them? I don't remember. But fruits or vegetables, if they're not sweet items, if they're not sweet items like most fruit are, I want them to be like soft cooked and soft. Um, lemons, limes, I might use some limes for some things, spinach, potatoes, and that was everything. Potatoes I can always get wherever. The owner put your selection together and handed it to all you, to you all in a bag, single bag. Happily you paid and waited for Cove to make his purchase, to make his purchase. Ready to go? Cove grinned, satisfied with his new choices. He added another bag to his small but growing collection. You nodded. Oh wait, before we start moving on and everything, wanna hold hands? You held onto his hand. Shyly, you lift your hand out for him to take. You took his arm instead. You offered him your arm. You shook your head no. No, you held onto his hand. There was no way you could say no to that face. Delighted, you laced your fingers with his without hesitation. Cove squeezed your hand back. With renewed eagerness, your boyfriend nodded his head in the direction you had been going towards. All right. Okay, now let's go. Together, you and Cove wandered the market on the lookout for any stalls that caught your attention. Cove was walking around with a spring in his step, while talking about the various me meal ideas he had in mind. I, I'm not gonna lie, like, I do like that we're spending time with Cove again, but if I was being 100% honest, I'm kind of disappointed because I actually was genuinely looking forward to having a scene with Ma and Liz. You know, I just as a change of pace and not so that every single scene is all about Cove all the time, which I get is probably the whole point of this game is spending a lot of time with that character, but I don't know, I just felt like there was a missed opportunity, and yeah, like, even though my characters, even though Vaughn and Cove appreciate going around this market together, I believe as a player, I honestly would much rather have, have committed to doing some quality time scene work with Liz and Ma, but I'm just gonna go with it. After a while, you had to go greater distances to find something of interest. Several of the stalls were selling the same goods. It was only a matter now. It was only a matter now of which you wanted to buy from. You continued ambling down the path until Cove stopped suddenly, literally pulling you away from your thoughts. Cove? You followed his eyeline past the crowds. Immediately, you knew what grabbed him: homemade jams and local honey. Ah, oh, I love those. The stall was glittering with quaint glass jars stacked high, each encasing gels of varying colors. Cove's eyes were practically sparkling at the sight. His feet automatically began to take him out, take him there. Likely without being fully aware, he had made an unexplained detour. When you got closer, you were surprised there were even more varieties than you thought. There were even different honeys based on what type of pollen the bees used. Cove focused, seemed torn between a little bottle of blackberry jam and one of clover honey. So I do love different types of honey based on the flowers that the bees harvest from. Um, killer bee honey, believe it or not, is really tasty. Very tasty. Uh, buckwheat honey is one of my absolute favorites. It actually does have a darker, almost grayish or brownish tone to it than your typical honey. And the flavor is, is definitely, like, noticeably different. Very buckwheat-esque. Um, orange flower honey is always good, too. It does have a little bit of an orange taste to it. Um, yeah, but I feel, uh, and blueberry, it does like blueberry flower honey, blueberry blossom honey, which has a blueberry tone to it. Buckwheat honey is probably my favorite, personal favorite honey flavor. Um, Cove's focus seemed to be torn between a bottle of blackberry jam and one of clover honey. Want some honey, honey? <laughs> you ask earnestly. Did you want some honey, honey? You said to just to tease him. Hmm, I wonder what on earth you could possibly want at this stall. Everything looks really good. You shook your head at him disapprovingly. You quite left him to his dilemma. Um... 
Did you want some honey, honey? He, he said just to tease him. Dumbfounded, Cove would not in response. His face was burning red. You grinned way too pleased with your own joke. You thought things you thought things for your over for yourself, too. Clover honey. Oh, there we go. Orange blossom, spring wildflower, honey butter. Oh, I like honey butter. Strawberry jam, raspberry jam, blackberry jam, apricot jam, blueberry jam, plum jam, rhubarb jam. They don't have killer bee or buckwheat. Honey butter, I'm definitely getting. Clover honey, orange blossom honey, spring wildflower honey. Um, spring wildflower honey, rhubarb jam, plum jam, blueberry jam, apricot jam, strawberry jam, raspberry jam. I'm gonna get plum jam because that's not very common. I don't see plum jam very often. So I'm gonna get plum jam and orange blossom honey. And that was everything. You paid and the shop owner started putting together your order. They carefully packed it in a couple bags with paper. Some really nice things about honey is that it is healthier than granulated sugar as a sweetener, because granulated sugar is more processed. Um, honey has a lot more nutritional value. There, it contains a lot of really great, like, um, I don't know if they're vitamins or minerals or, or what it is, but it definitely has a lot more healthier stuff in it than like sugar does um, and then the it also helps with your allergies too if you get um, honey from local farms or local flowers um, having honey with like your tea every day for example um, can help you um, with your with your spring seasonal I think summer too. Your, your seasonal allergies, I have definitely seen a difference, noticed a difference when I do that. And the last thing, which I didn't know until relatively recently, is that honey is one of those, one of the only foods that virtually never goes bad. You know, it virtually never spoils. Um, there are honey that they found in like Egyptian tombs, for example, that's still good. Like, you know, pretty much. It will, it will at minimum not spoil during your lifetime and mostly not your grandkids, grandkids' lifetime, basically. <laughs> so, um, that's another amazing... Honey is just an amazing thing. Like, if, if I had to choose between honey and sugar, I mean, it's always honey, hands down. Like, all, almost always honey. Unless there's a very like specific reason why you need to use sugar over honey, which there are, there are many recipes that call for sugar over honey because of their chemical properties and makeup and things like that. But as a sweetener in general, honey versus sugar, honey wins all the time. You paid and the shop owners are putting together your order. They carefully packed it in a couple bags of paper. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amused, you watch Cove give in and just buy both the clover honey and the blackberry jam. He also went all in getting spring wildflower, wildflower honey and plum jam too. Ooh, Cove, look at you getting all adventurous. The shop owner thoughtfully wrapped each in brown paper to protect them before putting them away in a bag. He handed the purchase to Cove. Thank you. Thank you. You both stepped away from the stall. Cove didn't fail to notice the look you'd been giving him since he agonized over his toast toppers. Hey, this doesn't go bad for a long time, so why not stuck up? I could have chosen one if I wanted to. Sure, and I get it. Why do you think I got so many too? Good then. As you began to stroll, Cove looked up at the sky. He smiled. It was sort of unexpected, considering all of this was technically an errand, and unexpected changes often upset him. But he was happy, and Cove liked doing this kind of normal thing. And you could tell that Cove especially enjoyed doing these kinds of things with you. You blushed thinking about how comfortable doing this with Cove felt. You were feeling the same as him. You were just feeling down how the trip turned out. Cove's pleased attitude annoyed you. No, um, you were feeling the same as him. You weren't going to let what happened put a damper on his outing. I'm glad you're having a good time. We're so domestic. I kind of wonder what the others are doing right now. You remain silent. We're so domestic. Cove took a sharp intake of air and started coughing for a moment. Afterwards, he looked at you and your teasing grin and chuckled. You're right. It's this, that is true. I like it. I like domestic. 
Later, um, you spotted a less crowded area. You took a break from browsing. Cove started rummaging through one of his bags just to check on how his goods were doing. A smile grew on his face as he went on to the next. You chuckled knowing that Cove wouldn't let anything go to waste. There wasn't a single doubt. He was going to eat it all. You held a hand in front of your face as you squinted upwards. The sun had moved quite a bit. You've been at the market for a good while now. Neither your feet nor your arms were sore right now, and Cove looked to be doing fine too, but that was something that could be coming. There was a price to pay for this month's shopping, and it wasn't always just in money. Can you give me a piggyback ride? Could you carry my things? Want me to carry your bags? Want a piggyback ride? You quietly enjoyed the break from walking. Can you give me a piggyback ride? Sure. Yeah, for you, I can do that. Thank you. Cove crouched down low so you could climb on. You pressed yourself against his back and comfortably wrapped your arms around his neck. Once you're in position, he stood. See, I would offer to give him a piggyback ride just so that we're like 50-50 equal, but I'm kind of envisioning that in real life, I'm probably, he's probably way more muscular than I am. <laughs> he's probably stronger than I am, and I'm, I guess, yeah, I think it would just make more sense if he was the one who just gave me the piggybacks. But if I could give him a piggyback, I would. I probably wouldn't last very long. Um, your head steadily rose high above the crowds. It was lifting your spirits pretty literally. Cove huffed, letting out a breathy laugh. Are you okay? Yeah, just realize this means I'm the one carrying all the bags too, not just you. Should I get down? No, I've got it. That's my man. That's my big, hunky, muscular man. Cove took a few test steps and then stopped. He grinned, pleased with himself. Ready to get going? Mm-hmm. Keep an eye out for any good deals while you're up there. You've got the best view around. I don't know, I don't know, because I don't get to look at your face as much when I'm up there, so I don't know if I got the best view around. Laughing, you craned your head up as to get as high as you could, keeping your hold on him secure. Cove was right. You had a whole new perspective. I'm on it. And with that, you and Cove continued a trip to the market together. Ma and Mom had both texted you during the trip, though only to say that they'd hoped you'd found some good stuff and they'd see you later. There were no answers on where they went or why. You and Cove continued to wind your way through the bustling market, the list of outstanding items steadily shrinking while bags grew heavier. As you had an unrivaled view of the market thanks to the Cove's height, locating the produce your heart desired had been easy. Carrying every single thing purchased as well as another person made it hard for Cove to check his own phone, so he'd made do without. Eventually, though, he said he ought to check if, out if anything important had come through, so your ride came to a stop out of the flow of foot traffic, and you dismounted his back. Cove rearranged all the bags he was carrying, freeing a hand so that he could pull out his phone. You watched his eyes dart over the screen as he read the waiting messages. Not important. I can reply to that later. He mumbled his verdict under his breath. Then Cove's face crunched up with confusion. Huh? Wait, I've got a message from my dad. Listen to this. Cove, I wasn't part of the plan. I didn't know what was going on when I left with Vaughn's mom. Where are you? He sent that ages ago. I didn't hear it come in. He sent another one since then. Says he hopes I'm alright and that he's not bothering me. The newest one says everybody's going to the parking lot soon and we can meet up there. He lowered his phone, eyes narrowed. The same conclusion that was setting on you had landed on Cove as well. <sighs> so it was on purpose. He lifted the phone again, staring hard at the screen. Didn't my mom pull this stunt when we were little? You know, that time she took us to the mall? At least your mom said that she was leaving. My mom's had a plan. The mall thing was spur of the moment. Is this a mom thing? What your mom did was even worse. I don't remember. You didn't say anything. Is this a mom, th is this a mom thing? Cole blinked, a slight frown furrowing his forehead. He didn't seem to know how to respond to this. The crowd of people passing by stayed as noisy as ever, a sharp contrast to the silence that had fallen over you and Cove. He was rubbing the screen of his phone against his shirt, wiping dust away dust and debris. He continued scrubbing the screen long after anything could have remained, the action a poor substitute for pushing away the awkwardness of the moment. You felt alright about it all. This whole mess was so upsetting to you, you were furious, you didn't care about what your moms had done, you were struggling to comprehend this. The shock was too fresh for you to even know you felt. No, I felt, I felt alright about it all. It doesn't bother me, one bit, personally. There was no malice behind the plot, you were quite sure of that. Your moms must have had their reasons for doing this, and it hadn't harmed you in any way. Okay, fine, how are they going to explain this? That can be really weird, huh? You shrugged, you exhaled a tired sigh. I shrugged. Are you okay? Are you alright? His voice was gentle. 
Yeah, really. That's good. Abandoning us without a warning wasn't really a cool idea, even if they meant well, which they probably did. He looked you straight in the eyes. Not making a big deal out of this out of this is nice. I'm not exactly thrilled personally, so if you want to complain to me, you can. I can't. I don't have anything to complain about. Maybe I am kind of bad. Okay, I'm disappointed. You can be kind of annoying to me. You didn't say anything. I don't have anything to complain about. Nothing? Ever? I don't know. For this situation, no. I have nothing to complain about for the situation. His mouth hung open, and then he laughed. No way. Come on, you've got you've got to have plenty of stuff to complain about just from the stunts I pulled myself, let alone what's happened today. Oh, uh, in general, I'm sure I have plenty of things to complain about. No matter who I'm dating, no matter how good we are as a couple, there's always something that you can complain about about the other person. It's natural, it's human. It would be actually bizarre and strange, and there's probably something wrong if you have nothing to complain about with the other person. So, yeah, I mean, I can complain about something. You cracked a grin at that, despite yourself. He could certainly be a troublemaker when you wanted it to be, but he could also be, but he could also be so kind. After a moment, he stepped away from you, face turned. Cove closed his eyes and took a deep breath. His brow creased, then furrowed deep into a scowl, his arms tightly coiling together. <sighs> so they did do something stupid. I knew it. His voice had taken on an exaggerated quality, but that, what, what truly distinguished it from Cove's typical speaking tone was the abundance of rage. This is such a chore. Parents are so dumb. Why do people have to go places with family members anyways? I hate them, and I also hate farmer's markets. Oh, I didn't realize you hated farmer's markets. I'm sorry, Cove, but I'm happy that you're able to express your anger, you know. It's don't, don't keep it bottled up inside. If you're frustrated, then say you're frustrated. You got it instantly. It had been years since the boy with the bowl cut had been in town for the summer, but Cove had never forgotten. To this day, he continued to unleash his, imperson his impersonation whenever the moment felt right. Sometimes you wondered if the act had grown more exaggerated over the years, or if the kid really was always that ridiculous. You burst out laughing. You shook your head at Cove's silliness. You played along. Oh, oh, he's just playing along. You smiled quietly. That kid is never gonna live that down, huh? He quietly sighed. Um, that kid is never gonna live that down, huh? Not ever. Cove gave you a lopsided smile, letting the joke rest for now. Come on, we should probably go meet up with the group. Yeah. You didn't dally any longer, slipping back into the crowd and making your way towards the entrance of the farmer's market. It didn't take long to reach the parking lot. Your parents, Mr. Holden and Liz, were already waiting there, and they waved at you both as you approached. Your own family seemed to be in perfectly good moods, in contrast to Mr. Holden. He stared at poor Mr. Holden, who was like, had no clue any of this was going on, who was completely felt left out. I don't mind, I don't blame him. He stared at Cove with an open concern as he got closer. <clears throat> hey bud, hey Vaughn, how you doing? We'd be doing better if we hadn't been abandoned in a farmer's market by our families. You saw your mom's frowning at his response, Ma glancing from Cove to Mom with blinking eyes. Just because Vaughn is really laid back doesn't mean you can just leave him out of your plans and expect him to go with it every time. He, that's a fair thing for Cove to say. Ma hung her head, ashamed, and Mom had a hand pressed to her cheek. You could tell that they were quickly regretting their scheme. I am so sorry. I still am not really sure what their plan was. Were they just trying to get us together? Because if that was the case, then why didn't they just let us go together? I don't understand. I'm sorry, Vaughn. His words were full of emotion. Mom squeezed Ma's arm. We were trying to make the errand more of a trip, less of a chore. Ma nodded. We didn't think you, Cove, and Liz wanted to be stuck trudging around the market with your parents all day. Especially not in the summer. So why didn't you just tell us to go off and do whatever we wanted? Why did we have to do all of this trickery? Why don't you just say, you all just go off and do whatever you want and we'll meet back at the parking lot at whatever o'clock. I mean, that just seems like... That, to me, makes more sense. I don't understand. Especially not in the summer. But you're always very thoughtful and don't like to leave your moms behind, so we did ourselves. It was only going to be for the market, not the other stops, but I prom I promise. No, I don't think so. I think if my parents told me that you're free to go wherever you want, I would be... I would be off. <laughs> I wouldn't feel obligated to stay with my parents. Still, you're right. We could have just told you and let you make your own call. Yeah, that... that would have made a lot more logical sense. I really am sorry. Neither of us meant to upset you. I'm really sorry. All gas, no brakes. And we should have known better. Sorry. 
Ma ditched me, too, after pulling her urge and potty break stunt, if that helps. I went off to do my own shopping, as it seems they plan. As it seems they plan. Sorry. Sorry I didn't check back in with you. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, and I just tried to blow it off. You quietly took in their stories of what happened. Over to the side, Cove was talking to his dad. Thanks for telling me something was up, though I feel bad for missing the warning that when you sent it. You're welcome. It's no trouble, sport. I learned my lesson about making surprise plans. Besides, I've got to register every thought that wanders through this head by you first, right? That sounds about right, yeah. Cove smiled at his dad, Mr. Holden laughing, clapped Cove on the back. Not wow, bad. we're really big being outplayed today. You realize you hadn't been the only onlookers to the Holden's moment. Your moms are exchanging rueful looks. Liz had her arms crossed over her chest, patiently watching it all unfold. Yes, looks like it. We'd better find some way to catch up. In that case... Maybe we can do Vaughn's chores for the next week. I'm not gonna say no to that. Ma jabbed Ma on the, sh on the shoulder. You might be onto something. Vaughn, how'd you, li how'd you like the sound of that? They looked at you hopefully. Sounds good to me. Maybe make it two weeks. You're gonna have to do more than that. I'll think about it. You don't have to do anything. I was never mad. Sounds good to me. Like, even if I even if I was never mad and my parents were offering to do my chores, I'd be like, Cool! It's all good to me. You do you. Sounds good to me. Good. We're serious. At the very least, we can make sure everyone stays together for the rest of the stops we're making today. You all nodded at the suggestion. Yes! We won't let you down. We'll be the best sheepdogs ever, guarding the flock and catching any strays. Funny. We could at least be shepherds. You chuckle, your mood lifting in spite of the bumpy morning. It was going to be all right. You turn to the entrance for the farmer's market for one final glance, pressing it into your memory under this new light. You thought on you thought on what you'd picked up at the market and how you were going to enjoy it later. Some things you could only get from local suppliers like this. This is another perk about coming along to the market today. Actually, you realized this would be a good time to bring out the fudge you got to share while everyone was clustered together. Hey, wait, before I go, I've got something for everybody. The announcement grabbed everyone's, grabbed everyone's interest and looked over at you, each curious about what you had, had in store. You dug your hands at the bag and pulled out this specially selected treat. I saw this amazing fudge stall, so I got a box for us to share. Ooh. Aww. Oh, that's so sweet of you. The Holdens were wearing matching grins at the prospect of free dessert, their family resemblance more notable as they mirrored each other's expression. Sweet is the right word for this. Thanks very much, Vaughn. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're Great. Fantastic. Can't wait to bust it open. We should save it for tonight. You can't properly enjoy a treat when there's still chores to be done. Besides, we don't want to make a mess with it melting in this, in this heat. The others murmured their agreements and nodded, reaching consensus. You stowed the box away safely for now. Cove then sidled up next to you, an eager smile on his face. You could tell from his expression that he was up to something. Thanks again for getting fudge. It was really cool of you. You knew he hadn't come over just to thank you individually. Not with that huge smirk. I, uh... I got something to share too, but, well, only really with you. I guess I'm not as nice. Oh well. You cooked up a scheme of your own? He laughed. Anyway, while I sort of picked something out with you in mind, he held, you held a hand to your chest, staring at Cove as he explained further. I mean... Since your mom decided we should, just, we should stop separately, I figured I could use the time to get you something, just as a little surprise. He reached into one of his bags and retrieved one of the wrapped up objects. You accepted the unexpected present and he looked on excitedly as he tore off the paper. It was a glass bottle with a small batch of lemonade. You didn't need to taste it to know that it would be nice. It was a boutique product. Ooh, that I would definitely appreciate. It was heavy in your hands, the container and smart metal cap reaffirming the quality. Even the label constructed from coarse paper rather than a flimsy sheet of plastic was distinctive. You were practically bouncing in anticipation as he smiled sweetly at your reaction. It's not a big deal, but I just thought you might like it. Thank you. You didn't have to do that. You're so wonderful. You smiled at him. You're always getting me things. You shook your head at his antics. You didn't have to do that. I can't believe we both got each other something. You weren't the only one who had that idea. Um, actually, we are a real, we were a real pair. You grinned. Um, we're a real pair. Hmm? His eyes began to widen. I got something for you, too when you weren't around. There, were a burst, there was a burst of laughter, first from your mom, followed by a chorus of chuckles from the other three. You'd forgotten that they were still hanging around. Unfortunately, they hadn't paid you and Cove the same courtesy and had been listening in on your conversation. You weren't even apart for a whole day, and you both still used that as a chance to get each other little gifts. 